let's learn about the Cremier Rao lower bound. What is a Cremier Rao lower bound? We are going to learn a way to prove that we are using our data in the best possible way. In statistics, we want to estimate a parameter, a number that describes a population. For example, we might want to estimate the average height in the population, which we call mu. The average height of a random sample of people is probably a good estimate of mu, the average height in the population. We could estimate mu by taking the sample mean, x bar. So the sample mean, x bar, is an estimator of the true mean, mu. For example, if we have data and we have three people, we could average their three heights, and we would say my best estimate of mu is 62, because that was the average of these three people. Now, estimators are random variables. This means that x bar is different every time we collect a new sample of data. So for example, if I collected three different people and the average of their height was 64 inches, then my best estimate of mu based on this data would be 64. It changes when we get a different sample of people. So x bar, because it's random, has a distribution. And that distribution is centered at the true value mu. So this is the distribution of our random variable x bar, the sample mean, and it's centered at mu. And if the true mean mu is 65, that means that x bar will on average be 65, but sometimes will be a little bit more and sometimes will be a little bit less. We call this property being unbiased. The estimator x bar is on average the true value mu. So we want an estimator to be good. And one way to be good is to be unbiased. And this means that the estimator is on average correct. An estimator being unbiased means it is unbiased for all possible values of the parameter mu. So for example, suppose we have three different countries, short land, medium land, and tall land. In short land, where the true average height is 60 inches, x bar will on average be 60 inches. In medium land, where the true average height is 65 inches, x bar will on average be 65 inches. And in tall land, where the average height is 70 inches, x bar will on average be 70 inches. This is being unbiased. But another thing that we want to consider is the variance of an estimator. So another way to evaluate an estimator is by its variance and a low variance is good. So for example, here we have two distributions. This estimator is unbiased, but it has a large variance. There's a very large spread. And this means that sometimes we get values of x bar that are not very close to the true value, mu. On the other hand, this green estimator is unbiased too, but it has a smaller variance. And the values here tend to be very, very close to the true value of mu. So this estimator on the right is better because it has a lower variance. It tends to be closer to the true value. So suppose we are in medium land where mu is 65. Well, both of these estimators are, are unbiased and they give us estimates that are around 65, but this one might be not very close to 65, whereas here, these values are much closer to 65. And which estimator would you prefer? Well, probably the green one because the green is better because it has lower variance. The estimates tend to be closer to the true value. Now, is there a limit to how low the variance can go? Could we maybe prove that this is the best possible estimator? That's what we're going to learn about with the Cremier Rao lower bound. So the data is random. So the value of the estimator will always vary from sample to sample. An estimator can't always be perfect. We can make an estimator with zero variance if we wanted to. For instance, that always guesses exactly 65, regardless of what data we see. So this would be what that estimator looks like, and its distribution would be 100% of the time on that exact value of 65. But unfortunately, this estimate would only be very good in medium land where mu is 65, sort of by coincidence, but it would be terrible in short land or tall land because it's never close to the true value. It's not unbiased for all possible values of mu. So an estimator can't always be perfect. We need to base the estimates on data in order to be unbiased. So we may want to limit ourselves to looking at unbiased estimators like x bar. And is there a best unbiased estimator? So a perfect unbiased estimator with zero variance is impossible. But can we prove that an estimator is the best possible estimator? And if we limit ourselves to unbiased estimators, we can sometimes get a lower limit on the variance. And this is called the Cremier route lower bound. So this is the idea that we can only squeeze out so much information from the data. So there's a bound on how low the variance can go. We saw it can't be as low as zero. The Cremier Rao lower bound on the variance is one over a quantity called the Fisher information. The Fisher information is a number that summarizes how peaked a distribution is, which tells us some information about how much the Fisher information is a number that summarizes how peaked a distribution is, 
which tells us how much information is contained in each observation. And this bound only applies to distributions that meet certain nice properties. But fortunately, the common distributions we use in statistics, like the normal distribution, binomial, Poisson, gamma, exponential, and other members of the exponential family are all things where we can find Cremier-Rao lower bounds. So the Fisher information is the variance of the derivative of the log of the likelihood function. I know that's a mouthful, but equivalently, it's also the negative expected value of the second derivative of the log likelihood function. And we don't need to understand exactly where this comes from, but we want to understand the idea that if a distribution is very flat, like this one on the left here, there's not a lot of information in each observation. Whereas here, there's a lot of up and down, right? The derivative of the likelihood function has a lot of variance. It goes up and it goes down. Um, and this contains a lot of information in each observation. So here is our very long process for finding a cremier rao lower bound. Uh, and this lecture is more focused on the idea of the cremier rao lower bound. Uh, so if you want to take a second to pause, but we're going to work through this very quickly. So what we do is we start with the likelihood function. This is the PDF or the PMF. So for a normal distribution, this is the likelihood function. It's the probability density function. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to ignore anything that doesn't involve our parameter mu that we want to learn about. So we're going to get rid of that part. The second step here is to take the natural logarithm of the likelihood function to get the log likelihood function. And that's what we have there. Then we want to take a derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to this parameter mu. Okay, and that's called the score function. So I took the derivative there. In step four, we want to take the derivative of this function again with respect to the parameter. So now I took two derivatives. Then I want to find the expected value of this quantity. Well, this quantity here does not involve x, so it, it is not random, and its expected value is just itself. Then I want to multiply the result from this step by negative n, because we have n pieces of information. Our sample size is n, so I multiply that by negative n. And then this is our Fisher information. And the Cremier-Rao lower bound is 1 over the Fisher information. So our Cremier-Rao lower bound is sigma squared over n. So our question is, can we do better than the sample mean? Well, we proved that the Cremier-Rao lower bound is sigma squared over n. So what is this? This is the best possible variance of any estimator of mu, of any unbiased estimator of mu. That's our lower bound. And we learned in an introductory statistics class that the variance of x bar is sigma squared over n. And because these two numbers are the same, that means our estimator x bar meets the cremier rao lower bound. It is the best possible estimator. It has the lowest possible variance we could ever get. So we can stop searching and trying to do better than the sample mean. There is no unbiased estimator mu that has a lower variance than the sample mean. This is related to the idea of efficiency. An efficient estimator is an estimator that meets the cremier rao lower bound. And the efficiency is defined as the cremier rao lower bound over the variance of the estimator. So for us, we said our cremier rao lower bound was sigma squared over n. Our variance of our estimator x bar was sigma squared over n. And because this is 1, our estimator is efficient. It has 100% efficiency. So the efficiency of x bar is 1. It is the unbiased estimator with the lowest possible variance. And this relates to this general idea of efficiency. And so some estimators are not efficient. So suppose instead of using x bar, the average of all the data, we just used the first of the n data points. We just looked at x1 and we ignored all of the other data. Well, obviously that's not going to be very efficient. We threw away most of our data. So this would be inefficient. And what would the efficiency be? Well, it's the cremier rao lower bound over the variance of the estimator. Well, our cremier rao lower bound is still sigma squared over n, but the variance of the first data point is sigma squared. Okay. So then when we divide those, we get the efficiency, which is 1 over n. So using one data point is only one nth as efficient as using all n data points, which is exactly what we would expect. So let's practice with one more example. We might want to estimate the proportion of people who like to dance, which we will call p. We could estimate the proportion p with the proportion of people in a sample who like to dance, and we might call that estimate p hat. The proportion of people who like to dance in a random sample is probably close to the proportion who like to dance in the population. In an introductory statistics class, we learn that the variance of p hat is p times 1 minus p over n. Is that the best unbiased estimator of p? Well, what is the cremier rao lower bound on the variance of unbiased estimators of a proportion p? And we could follow this whole process. We could start with the likelihood function 
of each observation, which is simply p to the x times 1 minus p to the 1 minus x. This is the likelihood function for a Bernoulli distribution, uh, which if you're familiar with a binomial distribution, this is just a binomial distribution with one observation. And then we could follow this whole process and we could do a lot of calculus and we could show that the Cremier route lower bound for an unbiased estimator of p is p times 1 minus p over n. So we learn that the variance, the true variance of p hat is this, and we learn that the Cremier route lower bound is the same. So we know that p hat meets the Cremier route lower bound. It is an efficient estimator. It is the minimum variance unbiased estimator. These all mean the same thing. That's the end. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.